Hello. In this video, we will learn basic concepts of object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programming, or OOPS, refers to languages that use objects in programming rather than sequence of functions. They model real-world entities or objects, like all the things we see around us, animals, plants, cars, etc. Object-oriented languages create software objects which are as close to real world as possible. One of the key purposes of OOPS is to bind together data and the functions or methods that operate on them in an object so that no other part of the code can access this data except its own functions. Before we learn what an object is, let us understand what is a class. A class is a user-defined blueprint or prototype from which objects are created. It represents the set of properties or methods that are common to all objects of one type. For example, we have a class circle from which we can create objects like wheel, watch, sun, etc. They are user-defined data types and in itself do not consume any space. If you compare with the primitive types such as int, float, in itself do not consume any space. But when you declare a variable of type int, space is then allocated for it. Similarly, you can create multiple class objects and then space will be allocated for each object. Let's look at how we typically define a class and what is included in it. The syntax for class definition is as shown. A class has data and functions or methods. For example, if we have a class circle, we could also have data like radius, color, etc. and methods like find area, find perimeter, set color, etc. Now, objects are an instance of a class or variables of type class. You create an object by specifying the class name and then giving the object names which actually allocates memory for them. The data is also referred to as class variables, instance variables or state. The functions are also referred to as class methods instance methods or behavior. Here, each object has its own data or state, like different colors and radius. Depending upon the state, the instance methods or behavior also return different values. Data or instance variables are always internal to the object and other objects cannot access the data directly. Objects interact with each other through methods, which is also sometimes called message passing. There are four key concepts of object-oriented programming, encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance, and polymorphism. Let's understand each of them. First is encapsulation, binding or wrapping of code and data together into a single unit is known as encapsulation. In object-oriented languages, a class binds together data and functions and keeps both safe from outside interference and misuse. In encapsulation, the data in a class is hidden from other classes, so it is also known as data hiding. Java lets classes enforce these access restrictions explicitly by using access specifiers of public, private, and protected. For example, denoting internal data with private keyword and designating methods intended for use by code outside the class with the public keyword. This brings us to the next concept of abstraction. In the real world, we have all these gadgets like mobile phones, cameras, which work on the click of a button without us having to worry about their internal working. Similarly, abstraction is the property by virtue of which you hide the complexity or the working inside an object and only the essential details are exposed to the user. The trivial or the non-essential units are displayed to the user. For example, in our circle, how the area is calculated is not exposed in Java. We use the abstract class and interface to achieve abstraction. The next OOPS concept is inheritance. In real world, we inherit the features of our parents and grandparents and have a family tree or hierarchy. Similarly, object-oriented languages allow new classes to be formed by inheriting features of a parent or of a base class. When one object acquires the properties or behaviors of a parent object, 
it is known as inheritance. This also provides code reusability. For example, I can have a class shape from which I can derive a subclass circle, triangle, square, etc. The data and methods available to the parent class or superclass is also available in the child class with the same name. In this case, it will inherit all the features of the parent or superclass. So, you have methods like find area, find perimeter, which are available to the derived class. Now, we have come to the next OOP concept, which is polymorphism. Polymorphism means having many forms. In the real world, humans have different blood groups like O, A, B, AB. Similarly, in Java, we use method overloading and overriding to achieve polymorphism. In method overloading, we can have multiple methods with the same name. Like to find area based upon number of parameters, the function can work for different shapes. In case of inheritance, the derived class can either use the find area method of the base class or it can have its own implementation of find area method which will then override the base class function. This is called method overriding. Polymorphism simplifies the usage of object methods by external code and Java takes care of calling the right method with the help of the signature and the declaration of these entities. In our next video, we will learn more about creating new classes and objects.